In this video, we are going to do a code review of the Spring Boot application that we are going to be working with. On the screen here, you can see that I have an API definition. So the Spring Boot application that we are going to be working with in this course is a, a simple Spring MVC uh, REST type application. Here I have a, a beer service, and you can see that we've implemented endpoints for list beers, create beer, uh, get beer by ID, update beer by ID, uh, delete beer by ID, and then also get beer by UPC. So uh, a variety of RESTful style operations that we can work with. This API documentation, I will leave a link to it in the course resources. And then the implementation that we are going to be working with in the course is here. It's under KBE REST Brewery. So this is a uh, Spring Boot project that implements that RESTful API, and I will also leave a link to this in the course resources. Now, I do want to prefix this. The course is for people that already know how to uh, develop Spring, so I'm not going to be teaching how to build a Spring REST API. That's uh, well covered in other content I have, and a lot of other people cover that as well. So to proceed, you do need to understand fundamental uh, Spring MVC creating RESTful APIs. But I do want to go through and do a quick code review to get you oriented to the Spring Boot project that we are going to be working with in the course. I'm going to toggle over to IntelliJ where I have the project uploaded. So here I'm in IntelliJ. This is the uh, checked out project from GitHub. And I want to do just a, a code review on this. So first, let's take a look at the dependencies. So here is the Maven Palm. Let me scroll up to the top here. Uh, we are using Spring Boot version 2.4.5. That is the uh, most recent version at the time of recording of Spring Boot. And you can see here in the properties, we are using Java 11. I am using Mapstruct and Project Lombok on that. More on those in a little bit. I do want to look, look at the uh, Spring dependencies. We are bringing in Spring Starter for Actuator Web. That is going to be Web MVC, not Web Flux. Uh, we have the starter for uh, Spring Data JPA, so that's going to bring bring in data or JPA and Hibernate. That's the ORM that we will be using, and then uh, we are explicitly bringing in validation. Uh, there was a recent change to Spring Boot where the starter uh, validation was previously included in uh, Web within I forget the exact version within the last year or so that is no longer included. So you do have to uh, bring those in. And if you forget, and this is one of those things that might uh, fail silently where the validation is not getting picked up, uh, that can be a, a problem because you forget that and then your validation silently fails to, fails to work. Then you can see on line 50, we are bringing in H2. Uh, we will be utilizing the H2 in-memory database dev tools. Can we see Project Lombok, Mapstruct, and then uh, our test dependencies. Here, let's go up to the build plugins. We do have the Spring Boot Maven plugin because I am using a, a different version of Lombok than what's being curated. I am excluding that from the Maven plugin, so that doesn't get automatically built in. And here's a, a important part. If you're not familiar with Mapstruct and Project Lombok, you do need to configure Maven like this to add in these annotation processors. I can't remember if the sequence uh, is important, but it's important to have these annotation processors there. I would recommend try keeping the same sequence here because I know this works. If you have a different sequence, I don't know if that, that will work. And then finally on line 115, I want to point out this is a compiler argument. And this is what tells Mapstruct to annotate the generated mappers with a Spring component annotation so that those mappers get brought in as Spring Boot components and we can do dependency injection on them. Without that, the project will fail to work properly. So let's come in here. I do want to take a look at the beer loader under bootstrap. So this is going to be implementing the spring boot command line runner. What this does, uh, it initializes our H2 in memory database with uh, 30 different beer objects. So we, you scroll down, you can see the various beers that I am uh, loading up into the, the database. It just gives us some data. So every time we bring up the application, they get initialized into the database. Speaking of the database, we are using uh, traditional JPA here. I'm not going to be covering JPA specifically, but you can go through. We can see that we are using Project Lombok annotations uh, for data. Also, the builder pattern is being implemented, as well as a variety of JPA annotations for the yield and whatnot. Uh, this is the what's getting persisted to the database. Now, we do have here, 
we are using a DTO model, so I do have uh, MapStruct mappers defined to convert from the database entity to a DTO. So the DTOs are kept under the model directly, and all that works pretty pretty well. Uh, coming from the, the ground up, we are using Spring Data, Spring Data JPA re repositories. We are following the repository pattern, so we do have a repository defined that is utilized in our services. So we do have an interface that we are coding to that does the basic uh, CRUD operations for us. And then here you can see the actual implementation of the service. I close down some of these packages real quick. And then finally, we do have a Spring MVC controller. So this is what's going to be handling the web request that takes in an instance of the beer service to support the CRUD operations. And we can see that we are using uh, basic Spring MVC uh, mapping. So we have request mapping the path, parameters are being set up, and all that's being handled by Spring MVC. And then we are following through using our, our service. Our service is going to be handling that. The service takes care of working with the database and then using the MapStruct mappers to uh, convert to and from the web-facing DTO objects. So let's go ahead and I'm going to run this application. From IntelliJ, if you're using that, you just come up and uh, say run. Oh, just going to do a stop and rerun there. Sorry, I had it running in the background already. And here you can see the basic initialization. And I do want to point out here you can see that there is a console output saying that we've initialized the database. So at this point, we are running on port 8080. You can see that a couple lines above. Uh, the API documentation, we could utilize that uh, to use Postman or something and exercise those uh, CRUD operations against port 8080 on localhost. So we'd have 30 beers loaded into the H2 in memory database, and then those RESTful APIs are now exposed and working. And if you want to take a moment on your own and go through and utilize a tool like Postman or Curl to exercise the API just to see, that, see those working to prove that it does work at this point, uh, go ahead. I encourage you to do so but I'm not going to be covering that specifically in the course. You should be able to start the application at this point. What this will do is tell you that you checked it out and you have your environment set up properly. It is building and it is coming up and functioning properly.